Much of the Oklahoma wheat crop got a drink of water, and Kim, here lately the price of wheat's gotten a bit of a drink of water too. What should producers do if they don't have any wheat to, to, to really sell in that dollar increase? Well, I think producers in western Oklahoma and the drought areas that uh, right now that wheat crop's not looking very promising. I can't see them uh, forward contracting or pricing any wheat. One, uh, they'd have uh, potential problems of meeting that forward contract or delivering that wheat. And two, if it does rain in those areas, then the wheat price will probably go down However, they're going to have significantly more wheat to sell, so it's going to offset. Now, producers in the area where we've gotten rain, where the, the wheat is recovered, it's looking relatively good. You know, just for psychological reasons, I might go, I might go ahead and price oh, 10 or 15 percent of my expected production if that price that the, the market's offering is above your cost of production. What should we read into this price increase? Well, I think what we should read into it is that the market needs wheat. Mm -hmm. The market needs quality wheat. You look at that July uh, Kansas City uh, contract, you go back to uh, December 12, you're at $4.40. Uh, on March 1, we were at $5.40, that dollar increase. And that's because in western Oklahoma and Texas Panhandle, we've got drought conditions and, and reduced production expectations. Mm -hmm. The market needs our wheat. They're going to, they need, going to need that wheat in June or July, both the exporters and the, and the domestic flour millers. And so they're going to bid up this price to get that wheat on the market. And I think we're going to see an increase in the basis too. And we've seen some increase in that. So you've seen a dollar on the board, forward contract price, we've probably seen a dollar 20 cents or so price increase since mid-December. Is is there really as much wheat in the world as what everybody's saying there is? I don't think there is. Well, there is as much wheat in the world. Right. But China is holding a, a large wow. percentage of that wheat. There, China is holding about 50% of projected any stocks of our wheat. If you look at the stocks to use ratio in the world, uh, it's went up from, you know, in the 20s to 38%. And that's high. That means the world has a, has a, a excess wheat. Mm -hmm. However, it's all in China. You take China out of the equation and look at the ending stocks to use in the world minus China, it's at 22%. Over the last uh, 10 years, it's been as high as 27% and as low as 22 No, you take China out of this equation, we don't have excess wheat. And we for sure have a shortage of milling quality wheat. Does China sell their wheat? Do they hang on to their wheat? Uh, China in the past has uh, uh, kept their wheat in, in for domestic use. Uh, back in the uh, 80s and 90s, they had excess stocks like they have now. They did not move it on the market. They're, they don't import. They're self-sufficient on wheat production. Okay, so with, with all of this, what should Oklahoma producers do to, to take advantage of that dollar? Well, if I'm in the western Oklahoma in dry areas where, you know, my production is questionable, I'm not going to do anything. Right. Because if it stays dry, then prices are going to stay at current levels or go higher. If it rains in those areas and production expectations increases, we may see prices drop a little bit, but they'll have more wheat to sell. So they can manage risk better by doing nothing. Now, if I'm in the areas where I've got rain, I've got good yield expectations, then just for psychological reasons, as long as that forward contract price is above my cost of production, I'm probably going to take, oh, 10 or 15 percent advantage of that. Okay, thank you much. Kim Anderson, Grain Marketing Specialist here at Oklahoma State University.